like to bring Mark to the stage now. So Mark's gonna, we're gonna interview Mark briefly, 10 minutes, just to give a, uh, to give a view on what he does and finance for business. Welcome to the stage, Mark. Hi, everyone. Hi. All right, so quickly, I'm Gil, I told them you're Mark. Tell them everything, tell them your name, your firm, and what you do. Yes, yeah, so my name is, uh, is this working? Get up on here. My name is Mark Manley. I'm uh, one of the co-founders of Q Consulting. Uh, which is a chartered accountancy firm. We also offer corporate finance stuff as well. Uh, we're based in Hertfordshire in a place called Harpenden, which is near uh, St Albans. Uh, we started the business in 2019 and it's grown to 25 staff and over a thousand clients. It's been quite a quick growth. Thanks very much, Mark. I'm not sure this mic is, gonna, is working, but I'm going to keep using it just in case. Um, now, on the breakfast this morning, um, the first challenge that came up was around finance. Um, and it was, and one of the key things for me was, on the back of that, not all um, firms such as yours are equal. So, just, just run through the challenge that came up, without naming who it was, so run through the challenge that came up and what, what, would the, what would be the takeaways for people in business for that? Yeah, so the challenge that came up was an accountant that wasn't allowing a lot of cost to go through. So, I don't think this is working at all. No. So, I'll just speak. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so they weren't allowing a lot of things to be passed through as business expenses. Um, I'm not going to call that a really straight accountant, but it's someone that wasn't really working with their client. How we've worked and how we've grown is because you speak to the client, and when you move from being a wage taker to a wage maker, the bottom line is obviously you know, the most important thing. The more cash in your pocket, the more you can do with expanding the business. So I was giving this individual some advice on how you manoeuvre or how you put things through so it would be an allowable expense and reduce how much tax you pay, which ultimately people want to uh, concentrate on. Yeah. We also went beyond that and talked about how you know, some firms can potentially go too far with that, which is not a good place to be either, right? Yeah, there's a, I suppose uh, operating in the grey might be a, a term, and that's where you want to work with your clients and tell them. Often you'll be asked by some clients about something way out there, which is more or less illegal, and uh, obviously you have to talk them out to, uh, off that branch and talk them back to where they need to be. But um, yeah, you've got two types of accounts. You've got some that are completely straight-laced, don't take any uh, advice or work with the client, and then you've got others that just go way off, off piste. Yeah. And we had a great example in the uh, discussion about someone who had studied accountancy in, um, yeah. in prison. And when they got out of prison, then went and took a load of clients and um, got their clients into trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, was some, <laughs> that was someone that I uh, they, uh, initiated. When you take over, you get, send a clearance letter, and uh, he'd got his qualification while he was in prison. And he had hundreds and hundreds of clients, mm. because no one checks to see if it's a qualified accountant. They just kind of take it on face value, unless you work at the big companies. And I, I trained at some of the larger firms, um, which is completely straight-laced, and you have to fill in timesheets every 15 minutes. When I started my firm, I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to speak to clients and actually talk to them. Yeah. So, Okay, now, I mean, that was, so that was an interesting discussion. We got a lot of, uh, you know, there were a lot. What we were trying to do was get people, in, men in the room, to raise their challenges, share them, and see what ideas came back. As, as we mentioned earlier, men are fixers. So we love to contribute. Um, one question I've got, though, uh, sorry, and I should have warned you about this one in advance, I reckon. Okay. But thinking about men versus women coming to you as clients, if you were to highlight differences, what do, what do women do well compared to men? What do men do well compared to women? Uh, women ask why when you uh, give them a, a, an answer. They'll ask why. What you find with men is uh, they'll say, oh, I'm terrible at finances, you just look after it. And then they don't even look at their accounts or they kind of just, well, I suppose, trust you as a, as a partner, but women always ask why. So you, um, you have to have the answer, you need to delve in. Um, I mean, it, it, for me, it, it keeps you more on your toes. It makes you question things yourself and have a better look at things. Um, but that's probably the main difference. Um, guys will just say, oh, I'm good at selling or I'm good at marketing or whatever it might be, and just stick to that and not want to look at the numbers. Where if you're a business owner, you should know your business. You should know what your bottom line is, what your break even is. You don't need to go into so much debt because you've got a partner. Your accountant is your partner, but you should know what your business is doing. You should look at a balance sheet or a P&L, which isn't too you know, rock and roll, but you should look at it and go, 
that doesn't look right. Uh, marketing isn't correct, or, or rent hasn't been, and that has definitely kept me and some of the juniors we've got more on our toes where women are asking, why is there no charge for rent? Just as an example. Yeah, yeah. so that sounds familiar with someone I know going, I think I'm paying too much tax, which is how yes. we, <laughs> well, yeah, you've taken a look at the accounts and said, yes, you are paying too much tax. And I think that uh, reflects one of the reasons why we're moving to you. Yeah, I mean, that, well, that was one of the reasons, obviously, it was definitely too much tax, but also being told last minute, you know, you have to pay your VAT by the 7th, on the 5th, uh, by the way, you've got £50,000 to pay. It's just not acceptable as a business owner. We all know, I'm an accountant, and we all look at VAT and go, oh, that can't be right. But it is, and as long as you're given enough notice, and you know that it's definitely the right figure, you can come to terms with it. But the last minute decisions, or uh, the 31st of January is just around the corner, 25,000. You know, people just don't have that. They can budget it, they can work through it, but they need some sort of a heads up. Great. Thanks very much, Mark. And changing direction slightly, we went off on a, um, uh, a few interesting discussions in the room this morning. It wasn't all about finance. There were some great um, unusual topics that came up. What was the, if you were to pick one topic that we went down that, that's you, that came from left field but was interesting for you, what was it and what did you take from it? Well, always when you're in a room like that and there's so many different businesses, I think there was no one the same in there with the same line of work. Um, but there was a guy in there that had a, a robotics company, there he is now, <laughs> which is educating children. I don't know what age they start, but educating children in new ways of technology. So AI, um, he was talking about flying cars, which apparently they are out there. But it's starting children young on that journey. I was very interested to see how that implements into the school education and, and if it's being encouraged, but we're even seeing an accountancy AI. I mean, there are so many firms out there that uses AI to complete sets of accounts. I think you lose an element of um, human eye, but it can definitely be a starting point for a conversation and then you add the, add the value as an accountant. The thing with technology as an accountant, you become less of an accountant and more of an advisor. Um, you know, there's things like zero QuickBooks, which you've probably all heard of, which makes bookkeeping nice and easy, but it means that your accountant needs to give you more. Yeah, okay, got that. And then <clears throat> one last question, because I know we, uh, we, we are up against time, seeing the symbol. But one point that you'd want people to take away about um, how they should partner with their accountant. So I like the idea, I love that women ask why, so I'm gonna be starting to ask why. You've given me the warning now. Right. We're gonna be working together. But um, thinking about one, one thing someone should take away when they're looking to work with their accountant, what would you want people to be doing that they don't? It's, you need to have a relationship with them. You need to be able to relate to them. You need to be able to, I always call it a safe tree, where you just can have that conversation and say, I don't want to use the word get away with it, but. Can you put these costs through? Can you have a conversation? It's gone. Um, and just partner. You know, you're inviting this person into your business. You're effectively interviewing them, you know? Make sure they're a good fit for your business and for you for the long term. So almost thinking of it like client attorney and client attorney Correct. privilege. And speak to lots, speak to lots of accountants. You know, a recommendation from someone else is obviously great, but you know, think of it as an interview process and, and speak to their clients if you can. You know, testimonial that's out on the website is one thing, but try and speak to the client, which was mentioned earlier today as well. That, that was it, yeah. Not just look at the uh, testimonial, but actually go in there and ask the awkward questions as well. That's right. So take the time to find the right one. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks ever so much, Mark. That's all right. Thanks for joining us on the Network Breakfast and Sunday morning.